Hello there you guys, welcome to another one of my live videos, this is your Wolves vs Manchester United uh, preview, I thought I would uh, do uh, the preview um, of course um, but, um, early, um, it is um, on Monday uh, night, um, on new um, 8 o'clock kickoff, and of course um, it is uh, the second uh, second uh, game um, of the Premier League season, and of course um, our first um, away game um, of the Premier League uh, season that, but I am actually you know, pretty confident you know, that Manchester United uh, can uh, win uh, this game um, against Wolves, obviously you know, we got off to a fantastic start um, on the opening day of the Premier League season um, against Chelsea, you know, with a, with a fantastic 4-0 uh, uh, victory. Obviously, it was good to see, you know, Daniel James coming off the bench, you know, scoring um, his debut. You know, it was also good to see, you know, Marcus Thatcher scoring two goals. You know, it was also good to see Martial score. You know, it was also good to see Paul Pogba provide two assists. And it was also, of course, good to see, you know, Andres Pereira provide um, an assist. So, it was a very, very um, good uh, result um, against uh, Chelsea in that. So, I don't think we have uh, many um, injury, you know, concerns to be quite honest. I think the only players that are injured, of course, is Eric Bay. Obviously, we do know that Eric Bay um, has got um, a series uh, knee injury, obviously we do know that Eric Bay um, is out uh, for um, up to uh, five uh, months, um, I think also you know Fossil Mensah um, is out uh, with injury um, in regards to um, Alexis uh, Sanchez I think he's uh, working um, on his uh, full fitness but I doubt you know he will start this game um, against Wolves but could be uh, named um, in the squad but maybe not uh, named um, in the squad because obviously you know he's been linked to a move away uh, from the football club um, as Alexis uh, Sanchez and that, um, obviously you know Wolves uh, you know, drew uh, their first uh, game of the season obviously you know they drew 0-0 uh, uh, with Leicester, obviously you know Wolves um, had a good season uh, last season you know finishing uh, seventh of course and you know Nuno Santo has you know done a um, pretty uh, decent job obviously the fixture team Wolves and Manchester United last season at Molyneux Nuno you know, was actually two one to Wolves and um, we didn't beat uh, Wolves uh, last season I think we drew them at Old Trafford 1-1 I think we lost to them twice um, once in the league and of course uh, once um, in the FA Cup uh, by uh, two goals uh, to one so it will not be um, an easier game uh, for uh, Manchester United than that um, but I do believe I also thought you know Anwan Saki you know, was fantastic on his Premier League debut um, against Chelsea and I think you know he's got all the ingredients required, you know, to become um, a huge uh, success um, at Manchester United um, as Anwan Saka. You know, his defensive contribution is good. You know, he's really, really good um, in intercepting. And obviously, he's going to be our first choice uh, right back uh, for this season. I also thought Harry Maguire, you know, was a fantastic um, on his Premier League uh, debut. I thought the vast majority of Manchester United fans, you know, had nominated him um, as the man of the match um, against uh, Chelsea because his distribution was good. He was showing that ability, you know, to play out uh, from the back. And I think him and Lindelof in our back line, you know, do complement each other, you know, uh, fantastically uh, well. And obviously, that's going to be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first choice, uh, you know, centre back. So he's obviously you not know, Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof. You know, maybe in the cup games, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, may rotate um, a little bit and that. But I was very, very impressed there with Harry Maguire. Maybe you know we did overpay for Harry Maguire um, a bit, but I think he's definitely you know going to succeed at Manchester United, and I think you know he's um, going to address um, our defensive deficiencies fantastically well because we do look now uh, much uh, better uh, defensively. Um, but I think you know the young players, all the young upcoming players, are more or less going to get given their chances this season. That because I thought the young players, you know, were a fruition you know, throughout uh, pre-season, and I do believe they're going to be fruition, you know, throughout uh, the course of this season. Um, actually, you know, the players that didn't play um, against Chelsea, I don't think Fred played, so Fred, you know, could be in line, you know, to play um, against the uh, Wolves and that, because I thought uh, Fred, you know, was very impressive um, in the game um, against the uh, Wolves uh, last season and that, because obviously, you know, Fred, you know, I'm still very sceptical about him, I don't know if he's uh, the long-term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United, um, is Fred, but uh, like I said, he did well towards the back end um, of last season, he's done well this season so far, well, he did well, you know, throughout uh, pre-season, uh, did Fred, so he could be uh, giving him the chance um, against their uh, Wolves. Um, but uh, like I did say, you know. Uh Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, went with McTomway and Pogba in that, um, in our midfield um, against uh, Chelsea and that, and I think, you know, McTomway, you know, will get given, you know, he'll probably start again, you know, will McTomway, because I think McTomway is going to get a lot of chances this season, and I do believe, of course, uh, that McTomway, you know, is going to uh, definitely know um, improve uh, this season and that, but like I do keep saying, I think the likes of McTomway, Pereira and Fred, you know, they're still, I don't know if they're the long-term solutions for Manchester United, like I do keep saying, I don't know if they've got all the attributes uh, to succeed um, at Manchester United and that, with Matic, you know, there's talk saying, you know, possibly, you know, he could be involved um, in the Wolves game. I wouldn't start Matic, of course, because like I said, the likes of Fred, Pereira and Tommy Ware, I think they're much better solutions than Matic, and I think they're more mobile and better on the ball than Manu Matic. So, the Manu Matic didn't play against Chelsea, but the Manu Matic, you know, people talk about, you know, how much, you know, experience he's got, because he's highly experienced, and, you know, he did win a couple of titles and that, you know, when he was at Chelsea and the Manu Matic, and we have seen glimpses of how good he can be in that, but, you know, he's too slow, too ineffective um, in that midfield, and he makes that midfield, of course, uh, look uh, totally um, imbalanced there, uh, just matching, of course, Matic 
Kovacic and of course he isn't getting any younger and of course um, he's um, aging him up so he isn't uh, the right uh, solution for Manchester United and that but you do know I've got concern of elements in that midfield and that because obviously you know we didn't strengthen our midfield up you know throughout uh, the course of the summer transfer window and that and I think you know the board um, have come to terms you know that you know the, the feels are that they, did, they didn't back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, enough you know throughout uh, the course of the summer uh, transfer window but I think even though they initially assured that they was going to be backing um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer I think you know regardless what happens uh, this season regardless of what happens uh, this season you know I still you know think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job you know will be uh, safe for this season but I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to be back in January I think of course um, he's also you know going to be uh, back uh, next summer and that you know which is um, absolutely uh, fantastic uh, news and that uh, but I think Solskjaer spoke with Edward with them about the lack of um, business um, in the transfer market and that um he did speak uh, with Ed Woodard um, about uh, the lack of uh, business term in the transfer market, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, you know, he was delighted uh, with our uh, summer transfer business. Obviously, you know, we spent £148 million, pounds, of course, um, on obviously Daniel James and Wan Saka, and of course on uh, Harry uh, Maguire in that. Uh, but like I said, it was going to be hard for us to address all the problematic areas um, in one uh, summer uh, transfer window, because obviously it's only been Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first summer um, as Manchester United manager. But I think the players we was in for, you know, throughout the course of the summer, we will probably revive um, our interest in them uh, back um, in January in that. But I think we're going to have a much better season this season than that because I can see the vast improvements already um, in the squad. You know, we look much better in the attacking third um, in the pitch. Obviously, you know, you've got Daniel James, a fantastic, fantastic electrifying pace. There's still improvements needed in this game, and I still say as a prospect, and need time to develop. You know, Marshall and Rashford, and that, you know, I think they're doing, they're going to do really, really well uh, this season. You know, and I think, you know, I've set a target for Rashford this season. I think he should score at least uh, 20 goals uh, this season. Rashford, maybe I've got the same thoughts about Marshall. You know, he should score maybe from between 15 to uh, 20 uh, goals and that. But Marshall, and Rashford are developing really, really well. You know, they are still uh, both uh, really, really young. And of course, you have got fantastic pace of both players. I think Rashford's really, really good at receiving the ball and he can obviously get them runs in behind. My thoughts are on Marshall, he's got fantastic speed and I also think he's finishing that um, as a really, really improved. But Marshall's obviously been given that number nine shirt, so obviously he's going to be playing more uh, more of a central uh, position uh, this season as Marshall because he looks effective in that central position, of course, you know, throughout uh, pre season. That, you know, Rashford may play centrally quite a few times as well because he seems to be more effective than that central position and that because obviously you've got Rashford and Martial anywhere that can both play out wide you know of course uh, they can both play uh, centrally in that uh, but they're going to do well uh, this season my thoughts on Mason Greenwood obviously you know he's the upcoming future obviously you know he did play in the game against Chelsea obviously you know came on um, as a substitute Mason Greenwood obviously you know he's been assured uh, more of uh, playing time uh, this season um, as Greenwood um, you know, which is um, absolutely uh, fantastic. But I think he's got all the attributes to definitely, you know, succeed at Manchester United. Did well when he came on against Chelsea. Also did really, really well uh, throughout uh, pre-season. You've also got John. Obviously, he's the upcoming future. John should, you know, definitely you know, get his uh, current um, opportunities um, and that. But we do look much better now in the attack of the pitch. You know, we only managed 53 goals in the Premier League last season. But I do believe, you know, we're going to score them um, a lot more uh, than that uh, this season. And, that. and um, you know, Solskjaer can't explain the reason why we didn't recruit a replacement for Lukaku. Obviously, to prioritise uh, the, the development um, of Mason uh, Greenwood and that, so maybe we don't need a replacement uh, for uh, Ron Will Lukaku. Um, but like I do say, you know, we look uh, much better uh, defensively as well. Like I said, because we conceded 54 goals in the Premier League last season, that was our highest total, um, of course, um, in uh, 40 uh, years. And, that, and you know, we have got a lot of uh, central uh, defenders now. I think we've got around seven central defenders. So I think we need to orchestrate on, you know, selling them um, at least uh, one uh, central uh, defender in that. Uh, because obviously, the likes of Small and Jones now obviously going to find game time very, very difficult with the arrival of Harry uh, Maguire and obviously Harry Maguire is the upgrade to Small and, um, and Phil Jones and I think you know I think there's players here now at this present time that you know are no longer good enough to represent Manchester United or Small and Jones no longer good enough you know they have been uh, two uh, long serving uh, players um, and, um, at the football club but they're not good enough you know no longer good enough uh, to represent uh, Manchester United um, I think we've also got a few others, you know, you've got Lindelof, you've got Bay, you've got Rojo, you've got Tuan Zebe. I think we are actually orchestrating on keeping I like Tuan Zebe at the football club, um, you know, due to the serious knee injury uh, that Eric Bay um, had uh, sustained, so I think we are orchestrating on, you know, keeping uh, Alex Tuan Zebe uh, for now. I think he's going to be a big part of the squad this season, you know, Alex Tuan Zebe, you know, did well throughout pre-season, he also did well on his loan spell uh, with Aston Villa uh, last season, uh, did uh, Alex uh, Tuan Zebe and that, so he should, you know, he should at some point, you know, get uh, given um, his chances. Um, my opinions on Victor Lindelof, you know, I think he's uh, flourishing um, at Manchester United. Um, obviously, these question marks, you know, can he keep the consistency up? And I do believe, you know, Victor Lindelof, you know, can uh, keep uh, the consistency um, up. Because obviously, he was very, very good in his second season. There was vast improvements in his second season and his first season. Because in his first season, he was largely inconsistent. You know, he didn't really settle in. You know, that's that consistency. But I thought in his second season was good. So far, this season has been absolutely uh, fantastic as Lindelof. And obviously, Harry Maguire is the best option than what we've currently got in our central defensive area. But I 
I think him and Lindelof, you know, are going to blend in very, very well uh, together, you know, uh, this season without um, a shadow of a doubt. And I think, you know, Lindelof and Harry Maguire, you know, can emulate into like what a Vidic and Ferdinand, because they were two, they were two good centre back partnerships, you know, back under the um, Alex Ferguson and Rare. So I'm happy that we got the experience centre half in. I'm also happy that we got that right back in. But I just have got some strong reservations, definitely, you know, about uh, that uh, current uh, midfield. Um, but I think more players, you know, do need to be sold. Uh, more, uh, we need to uh, sorry, uh, sell uh, more uh, players than that because he's now a uh, problematic uh, player um, at the football club. Obviously, four players have left you know, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. I think it just got confirmed quite recently that Joel Pereira um, has joined uh, Hearts um, on loan. So, obviously, you know, he has uh, currently gone to Scotland. But, um, obviously, the players that have left since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival, obviously, we do know that Ronald Lukaku left Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, he left uh, last week, is not that? Um, obviously, you know, we we, you know, we just got a substan substantial amount of the player that's really a flop and that. And obviously, we've recouped the money that we did pay for you know Lukaku um, a couple of uh, years ago uh, from Everton um, and that so I thought that was a good piece of business from the club um, in that aspect you know generating a substantial amount for a flop basically um, obviously we know Valencia left at the end of last season after his uh, 10 years at Man United obviously Ander Herrera of course left Marion Fellaini uh, left uh, back in the January transfer window. but I think these more players that do need to be sold and don't forget we've got until the 2nd of September you know to uh, negotiate uh, the sale um, of players so obviously I do believe that Marcus Rojo needs to leave the football club um, obviously you no know, Rojo didn't play um, against um you know, he's another player that didn't play against Chelsea. I think with Rojo, he's obviously behind now, basically. He's Rojo, he's behind. Obviously, he's an uh, first choice, Rojo. And I think his Manchester United career has been mainly affected anywhere uh, with the amount of um, injuries um, he has uh, sustained. Obviously, we do know that Everton had inquired about getting Rojo um, on deadline day. Um, inquired about getting uh, Rojo um, on deadline uh, day, I think it was. Uh, obviously, we put a £25 million valuation, but obviously, Everton failed to meet that uh, £25 million valuation. Now, I think also Everton inquired about getting Smalling on loan, but uh, I think... Uh, uh, Manchester United um, had currently uh, turned uh, down uh, this offer. Rojo, of course, had just got under two years left on his contract uh, with Manchester United, and as you all know, um just under two years left in his contract on Manchester United and I think he's now uh, 29 uh, years of age and I think we do need to get rid of him I think I've also got the same thoughts about Matty or Damien you know, we also need to uh, get rid of him I think actually you know, Dam Damien um, has returned uh, back to uh, training You know, maybe he could I don't know if he'll play any games this season Damien but he has confirmed he has been uh, back in training obviously you know, Damien obviously you know, isn't first choice obviously Luke Shaw um, is our uh, first choice uh, left back um, and that. Uh, with Damien I think if he does leave Manchester United he could probably you know, make a return uh, back to um, Italy um, obviously you know because he spent the majority of his career um, in Italy you know, when he was younger. So if we could get rid of Rojo and Damien, you know, I think maybe we could generate around maybe 30 or £35 million pounds, uh, for their uh, departure and that. Um, but they are uh, two uh, problematic uh, players um, at the football club. Um, now, my overarching view, obviously, you know, um, on Alexis uh, Sanchez, as they have been updating you on a regular uh, basis, and I've also been updating you today um, about Alexis Sanchez. Yeah, he's working on his full fitness, because obviously he's been below on his uh, fitness um, as Alexis Sanchez, because obviously Sanchez, you know, could participate maybe in the Wolves game. I did say I think his fitness levels you know should be fine you know by the time uh, you know by the time we do play Wolves um, on Monday um, evening and that um but my opinions um, on Sanchez, I think, you know, he's in, he's, been, he's become injury prone since he's become a Manchester United player. Obviously, I, like I was going to say, you know, he hasn't played you know, yet uh, this season. Obviously, he wasn't part of the squad against Chelsea. Also, wasn't part of the pre-season squad. I think he'd been playing uh, on Copa America duty with Chile. Obviously, had sustained um, a hamstring uh, issue, I think, you know, whilst he was on uh, Copa America duty, uh, Sanchez. But I think it confirmed the other week that, of course, um, he has uh, returned uh, back to her training as Sanchez. But obviously, Oligan and Solskjaer has confirmed that, you know, wants uh, Sanchez uh, to leave uh, the football club and reportedly he's ready to send him to the, uh, to train with the Manchester United reserves in order you know, to force him um, out um, in the football club. I think Sanchez you know, does want to leave uh, the football club anywhere. Even some media reports were saying that Sanchez you know, is uh, refusing uh, to leave uh, Manchester United but I think Solskjaer has confirmed Solskjaer um, has confirmed that he's not a part um, of his plan, first team plans uh, for uh, this season. Now. But obviously for the majority of the summer anyway you know, we've been trying to get rid of um, Alexis Sanchez but obviously we do know that we've found it you know, very very difficult you know, due to his uh, substantial wages because obviously Sanchez is on 400 grand a week um, obviously you know he's the highest player player at the club he's the highest played uh, player um, in the Premier League and I did say you know Sanchez's wages um, are having a really bad um, effect um, on the football club um, and all that um, but yeah, I've just been I've just been reading their reports um, about um, Alexis uh, Sanchez, and it uh, actually you know does basically uh, say that um, you know now this there is a there is a. 
There's a trio um, of Italian clubs there that are interested in Sanchez. So reportedly Juventus are interested, AC Milan are interested, and reportedly you know, Napoli um, are interested. You know, reports uh, came out where the other week. Oh, I think it was last week, or it was early on this week, saying that you know Rome um, had been um, in talks about you know with Manchester United um, about the prospect of taking um, Alexis Sanchez out um, on a long season uh, loan and that. Um, and reportedly, I think you know we would be happy to pay the majority of his substantial wages, you know, to get him out um, on a long season loan. At one point, it, it only seemed to be Roma that were the only club interested. In Sanchez, but now reportedly three Italian clubs now have entered uh, the race uh, for um, Alexis uh, Sanchez um, and that. Because obviously, there's no point Sanchez being here anywhere because obviously he's behind the likes of Martial, he's behind Daniel James, he's obviously you know behind uh, Marcus Rashford um, and all that. So I think it is a bit pointless, you know, um, Alexis Sanchez, you know, uh, being um, at the football club. Um, but he's obviously you not know, been very, very inconsistent anywhere there from Manchester United, you know, since his arrival from Arsenal, you know, back in uh, January 2018. Obviously, you know, he's, only, he's uh, made 45 appearances and only managed. Uh, five goals um, as Sanchez so that just uh, basically indicates how, how you know inconsistent you know Sanchez um, has been but he just hasn't exceeded expectation levels at Manchester United you know as we all thought he would have done because you know don't forget he was an exceptional player at Arsenal you know he was also an exceptional player when he was at Barcelona you know when he was a uh, young he played um, under uh, Pat Guardiola's guidance but obviously you know hasn't uh, replicated um, any of this form um, at Manchester United um, as Sanchez and obviously now he doesn't have a future at the club anywhere because obviously you now um, he's uh, 38 years and they're Jeremy Sanchez He is uh, 38 years in age, Jeremy um, Sanchez, and, and I just think you know he's one of the problematic players um, in the football club, and you know. I thought he would have made us when he came in. I thought he would have made a sort of similar impact, you know, to as Robin Van Persie did, you know, when we got him, you know, back in uh, 2012 or was it uh, 2013 and that. But Sanchez, of course, has been a huge disappointment. But I think, you know, he could be open anywhere, you know, to make a return, make a return back to Italy. Because don't forget, was it around eight years ago now? Obviously, you know, played for the under knees and that did Sanchez. So obviously, he's had experience ever playing um, in Italy, but has been a huge uh, disappointment uh, for uh, Manchester United. Um, I think also this season, you know, um, Angel Gomez will. Definitely, I'll give it, get get given his chance. Obviously, he's gonna. I think he's gonna be a big part of um, the squad uh, this season. So, on this video, I'm gonna give you my start eleven prediction. Uh, what team I think Oligan and Solskjaer is gonna go with um, against Wolves? Um, he will probably you know rotate it a little bit. He will go. With, I think he'll probably go with a similar team as he did do against Chelsea. But I think he may rotate a little bit. You know, probably he'll definitely go with the same back line. So, obviously, it's gonna be De Gea in uh, and Wam Saka at right back. Obviously, it's Wam Saka anyway. That's our first choice right back. Now, obviously, we've got a few full backs. Obviously, we've got Ashley Young. Obviously, you know, he's. I think he's a backup obviously don't forget you've got Diego Dalla I think Dalla you know will get given him um, his chances uh, this season um, obviously you know we only got Diego Dalla uh, last summer from Porto for around £20 million obviously you know Dalla um, did well you know for our uh, pre-season um, but yeah we have got a um, few fullbacks don't forget we've got Damien as well you know and all that we've got a few uh, fullbacks and that um, but yeah it will be on Mamsaka at right back centre back partnership obviously you know is going to be Harry Maguire and Vince Lindelof obviously it will be Luke Shaw um, at left back because obviously you know Luke Shaw is obviously you know um, our first choice uh, left back I thought Luke Shaw was quite average against Chelsea, but he's still a very, very um, imperative player. Obviously, reflecting on his impressive performances last season, Luke Shaw, of course, I won't uh, the double uh, player um, this season and that. Um, so, yeah, it will be a uh, Luke Shaw um, at left back. I think that Tom Ware will get given another chance in this game. I think that Tom Ware will probably you know, play um, alongside uh, Paul Pogba um, in that uh, midfield. I think he'll probably go with a 4 2 3 1 again, you know, because I think that. That's the, I think that's the for, tactical formation that Oligan and Solskjaer is going to go with on a regular basis this season. He may go with a 4-3-3, you know, quite, you know, quite in a few games this season, but I think he'll mainly, you know, go with that 4-2-3-1 and that. Um, so, yeah, it'll be in the back line. It'll be Al Mamsak, Aaron McGuire, Lynn Loft, Luke Shaw. I think Pogba will play him alongside at Tom Wayne in that midfield. I think, actually, you know, Pogba, you know, needs to be uh, freed up because Pogba, you know, seems to be, uh, more, Pogba seems to be more effective, you know, when he's uh, freed up, uh, you know, does uh, Paul Pogba to be quite unsure. Paul Pogba had a great game um, against Chelsea in the second half, you know, providing a to um, assist and hopefully you know we can keep Paul Pogba um, the football club hopefully hopefully Solskjaer can do everything he can you know to try and convince him uh, to you know remain um, at Manchester United but Pogba's future you know uh, still uh, remains um, uncertain um, at the moment so I think you know the free attacking mid um, I think probably, you know, Jesse Lingard will play again. I think he'll start in this game, Jesse Lingard. Um, I think he might, you know, play him um, in the number 10. You know, he can also put, you know, one matter in that number 10. But I don't think, you know, one matter, you know, will start this game. Maybe he could be involved, but I don't think, you know, he will uh, start the game, you know, one matter. Um, but I think Jesse Lingard, you know, probably, you know, will be in that number 10. Uh, maybe Daniel James won't start the game, but I think he, he'll probably, you know, come on as a substitute, you know, like he did um, against uh, Chelsea. He could start the game, maybe prove him wrong, but I don't think, you know, he currently uh, will. I think it'll probably, you know, be a uh, Rashford um, on the left. Um...
Rashford on the left and on that right wing, um, well, you could actually, you know, put Daniel James on the right wing because he played quite a few times on that right wing position, you know, throughout pre-season. Um, but I don't think Daniel James started this game. So you, you could actually well, put Diego Dalot um, on that right wing, you know, to be quite honest. You could put Diego Dalot on the right wing. So I'm going to go with Rashford on the left. Um, you know, I'm going to go with... Um, Lingard in that number 10, I'm going to go with Dalla on the right and I think I'm going to go with uh, Marshall um, up top. So that is um, my predicted um, 11 uh, for uh, the game um, against the uh, Wolves. But, you know, don't underestimate Wolves. You know, they are a pretty uh, decent uh, team. You know, they have got good players and that. You know, they have invested well, you know, where uh, uh, Wolves uh, don't uh, forget. I think they are in the Evo League this season, um, our Wolves, because I think, you know, they've you know, they got that uh, qualification um, and all that. Uh, but, yeah, so it's the second game of the Premier League season. Wolves versus Manchester United Monday evening. And, of course, um, it is um, an 8 o'clock uh, kickoff. And I do believe after Wolves, so we have you know, got a Crystal uh, Palace and that. But I think, you know, our expectations this season, you know, we'll be able to finish uh, <laughs> finishing that top four. And obviously, you know, Ligon and Solskjaer's got to um, exceed uh, these expectations and that. And I did initially say our aspirations will be that top four in the next couple of seasons. But I think if we can do further investment in January, probably perhaps next summer, I think we can definitely you know win uh, the league uh, next season without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. Um, and I think, you know, we will uh, finish um, in the top four uh, this season. I think we could even actually, you know, finish um, in the top three, um, if I'm right. We could even possibly, you know, uh, get a second uh, place but there's going to be vast improvements this season I can already see in the squad obviously last season was a huge disappointment you know we finished six obviously you know we didn't win any way we failed to qualify for the Champions League and I did you know give my overall analysis on the transfer window and I was impressed with the three players that we brought in but I did say certain players you know would have had reservations about you know joining Manchester United you know obviously you know because we're not in a Champions League uh, football and obviously in that aspect it's going to be hard you know to attract uh, players uh, to elite level we've actually failed to qualify for the Champions League you know three times out of the six seasons you know since um, Alex Ferguson's uh, retirement and that but like I said we have got big ambitions for the future and obviously you know we want to get back to winning Super and obviously this is something I live in Solskjaer anyway you know wants to bring uh, back uh, to the football club you know he wants to bring the correct philosophy to the club you know obviously Oligan and Solskjaer is following Alex Ferguson's philosophy and he also you know wants to bring uh, that winning mentality of course uh, back to the uh, football club and that and I think Oligan and Solskjaer you know um, is uh, the right man uh, to do that and that um, I think he's the right man uh, for Manchester United even though in last couple of months of last season, you know, it did go all wrong of course when he did uh, get uh, the job uh, permanently and that, and obviously Solskjaer did well when he was the interim manager in his first three months at Manchester United, you know, don't uh, forget um, but I think, you know, we're going to do uh, much uh, better uh, this season than that, but I think I'll be happy you know, I will, well, should I say I will be happy of course if we finish in the top four um, or the top three uh, this season, because at the moment I still think City has tried ahead of us, obviously we're doing all that, of course, uh, that Liverpool um, and that um, are them ahead of us, so it's very imperative, you know, that we catch up there with like seven Manchester City um, and Liverpool and that um, but I think it is going to work out under Oleg and Solskjaer. You know, he has got the experience of a manager. You know, don't forget. You know, he won a couple of Norwegian titles with Mold. You know, didn't really have a good ten a good time with Cardiff. You know, and had a short tenure with Cardiff. Anyway, did Oleg and Solskjaer. But obviously, we want we want it to work out under Oleg and Solskjaer because you, you know all, all all our fans love him a lot. Obviously, he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years um, under um, under Alex Ferguson. I think he flourished um, under um, Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance. And I did say anyway, we haven't got the structure to keep sacking managers. You know, we've already sacked three managers. You know since um, Alex Ferguson's uh, retirement. Um, obviously, three managers, of course, um, have uh, been uh, sat in the football club. So, obviously, this is our fourth manager, you know, since um, Alex Ferguson's uh, retirement. And, and, you know, I do know we have been a toxic club in the last uh, six years. And I don't, like where the, I don't like the way the club has been run in the last uh, six um, or seven uh, years. And I have been, you know, uh, very, very um, infuriated um, about it. I've also been infuriated with lack of silverware, you know, in the last uh, six uh, years um, or so. Um, but, like I said, you know, we have spent a hell of a lot of money on players over the years like I said you know in all the managerial areas a hell of a lot of money has been spent into the football club obviously you know we've got a history of spending big on players obviously we've not only done that you know we've also got pl big players um, on big contracts but obviously you know we can do that because we're one of the richest clubs in the world obviously you know we're one of the richest clubs um, in the world you know we're a massive club uh, also you know we've got a massive uh, revenue so obviously you know we can um, afford to overpay for players and of course uh, give uh, players a uh, big uh, contract and that um, but at least Oligan and Solskjaer, you know, has, has, has got some kind of transfer strategy. Obviously, he worked out his transfer strategy, you know, at the beginning of the summer. He did basically say that he wanted to recommend a number of young players to come to the football club, you know, that could grow, develop um, and emulate um, in superstars and that. Uh, but, in the, you know, in this game against Wolves, maybe Fred could get given his chance. If he doesn't, I think he will get given his chances, you know, sometime uh, this season with Fred. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, he, he definitely, you know, he could be in line to start, you know. I'm just, like I just said earlier on in the video, I'm just giving you basically, you know, my uh, starting um, 11 uh, prediction. And that, uh, but he could, you know, be in line to start off, not start, you know, maybe uh, be involved um, in the game. Maybe Sanchez, you know, could uh, be involved um, in the game. Um, but um, obviously, you know, Sanchez has been 
constantly no link to with move away uh, from the football club. Uh, my opinions um, on Paul Pob, I think it's very imperative that we do now keep him um, at the football club. Obviously, I've been uh, reading uh, recent uh, reports um, about uh, Paul Pogba, and it uh, reportedly said, um, obviously, he's still unsure um, about his uh, future. And that he did come out early on this week, did Pogba, and he did say, you know, these are question mark that remains, you know, regarding uh, his Manchester United uh, future. But he still has indicated out that he could leave Manchester United this summer, uh, Paul Pogba, and that. And obviously, it got confirmed a couple of months ago, you know, Paul Pogba basically wanted to to leave, he publicly admitted that he wanted to leave you know, he did say he, he wants to seek a new challenge, you know, he wants to uh, rejuvenate um, his career um, and all that, but I think, you know throughout the course of pre-season and that, and throughout the course of summer in general, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has spoken to the vast majority um, of our uh, players, but he has been speaking a lot about Paul Pogba quite lately, you know, he's also spoken to Paul Pogba himself as Solskjaer and I think Solskjaer's doing everything he can, you know to try and convince uh, Paul Pogba to remain um, in the football club and that, obviously it was initially in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plan, you know, to build um, a side um, around Paul Pogba, but I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer told Paul Pogba that he doesn't need to leave, of course, you know, to uh, fulfil um, his ambitions and that. So, I was reading some reports today, I think he was stemming from Talk Sport, and, you know, they said, you know, Paul Pogba now could stay at Manchester United. You know, he could reject Real Madrid and remain loyal uh, to Manchester United, at least, therefore, uh, this season and that. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, because of the sign name of Harry uh, Maguire, this could be one of the reasons why this could be one of the reasons that could convince you know Paul Pogba to remain at the football club. I think it was, this was actually you know, stemming uh, from Steve uh, McLaren and that. Um, this is what it uh, basically um, said. Um, but I hope that Paul Pogba can remain um, at the football club. And I did. I was desperate throughout the course of summer for someone to come in to play alongside Paul Pogba. Like I said, I would have been excited about the prospect of Bruno Fernandes, you know, playing alongside uh, Paul Pogba in our midfield because I think you know they would have complemented each other, you know, really, really well. But um, I hope Paul Pogba can stay at Manchester United because you know we have seen glimpses of, glimpses of his best form at Manchester United. You know, I know he's been largely inconsistent since he rejoined from Juventus back in 2016, but I think he's done well in pre-season. He did well against Chelsea. He also did well in that three-month period when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was the interim manager. So I think Paul Pogba, you know, when he's at his best, he's one of the best midfielders in the world. And of course, you know, he's like uh, two players um, in one. And he does bring that creativeness in that midfield. And Paul Pogba is good at playing them passes. You know, he plays them passes well. He feeds the attackers really, really well, does Pogba. So it's very, very imperative, of course, that we do uh, keep him at the football club. Um, you got Paul Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, coming out, um, was it at the beginning of pre-season, saying that Paul Pogba um, is in the process of leaving Manchester United and that this is what, you know, his agent, um, Said, but I think Paul Popper's agent, Min Paul Popper's agent, anywhere, Mini Raliola has been in the process of finding Paul Popper a new club, um, at least there uh, for last uh, well, I should have saved the entirety of the summer. He's been in the process of finding uh, Paul Pogba a new club. But Paul Pogba is not only the most expensive signing. He's also, you know, uh, a World Cup winner. He's also one of the uh, highest played uh, players in um, the football club on around, what, 290 grand a week. I do believe, uh, was it all the squad or the majority of the squad that uh, got their uh, wages cut by 25%, you know, with our failure to qualify for the Champions League and that. Um, but Paul Pogba still under, he's still got two years off in his contract with Manchester United, you know, with an option, you know, to um, extend uh, by um, a third year. But you know, if we do know, but that guy's just turned off. We do know uh, for the entirety of um, the summer, obviously, you know that. Um Paul Pop has been relentlessly, you know, linked to a move uh, to Real Madrid. Um, obviously, you know, Real Madrid have done good business themselves so far this summer. You know, their window's still open, of course, the European chance window's still open. Real Madrid have spent £300 million pounds, uh, on five players this summer. Is it just over £300 million pounds they've spent? You know, Real Madrid have sold players as well, so they have generated some of the money back that they have spent. I think they've generated around um, £100 million pounds in that of Real Madrid. Um, But I think actually, you know, Paul Popper's first choice preference anywhere um, has been uh, Real Madrid, and of course, his likely destination has been Real Madrid. So if he is, of course, to leave Manchester United, I think he will make the move to Real Madrid. I know there's been, you know, rumours coming out saying that he could make a return back to Cherin because he did have four good years in Cherin, did Popper, but hasn't really replicated any of his form um, at Manchester United and that. Um, but yeah, there's been talks about him making a return to Juventus. But obviously, you know, Real Madrid are unwilling to meet our asking, uh, our asking price for Pogba. You know, we said we're demanding that one around £180 million. Pounds. So I did save the entirety of the summer. Due to our substantial amount with Pot and Paul, Pogba, you know, this could be the stumbling block of him anyway, you know, leaving uh, Manchester United. So £180 million, pounds, uh, obviously, you know, that figure we are demanding just more than double than what we paid for him from Juventus uh, back in uh, 2016. And, that. and, you know, Paul Pogba's stats were very impressive last season. He scored 16 goals and provided 11 assists, you know, in... Uh, 
um, was it 47 games, I mean, all competitions and that. And um, obviously, with, with Man United, you know, he's won the Europa League and the League Cup. Obviously, that came in, you know, in uh, Paul Popper's second season um, at the football club and that. Uh, but it's not only been this summer, he's been subject to a lot of transfer speculation. You know, reflecting back last summer, you know, all, uh, Paul Popper was subject to a lot of transfer speculation. Of course, he was widely spoken about. Obviously, back under the Jose Mourinho era, you know, Paul Popper had a really bad relationship with him. Paul Popper never really got the chance under Mourinho and that. And obviously, you know, he had um, a bad relationship here with Jose Mourinho where he did Paul Popper and that. And obviously, you know, Paul Popper got one of his best wishes when Jose Mourinho left uh, the football club and that. Um, but yeah, I think there was talks about him going to Juventus last year. There was also talks about him going to Barcelona, I think, uh, back um, in January and that. Um, but Paul Popper did confirm a couple of months ago that he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, the football club. Um, obviously, you know, in regards to the captaincy, I think quite a few players and that are going to get given their chance to become the captain. I think Paul probably you know, could become captain at Manchester United this season, of course, um, if he's there to remain um, at the football club. And he did say a while back that Solskjaer considered Paul Pogba as the captain, say, you know, to try and convince him uh, to remain um, at the football club and that. Could we possibly, you know, open contract negotiations as well to try and get Paul Pogba a new contract to convince him uh, to remain um, at the football club? Obviously, we'd have to give him a huge pay rise, you know, to probably, you know, give him uh, that new contract and that. But I think his future, you know, he's still um, basically, you know, um, up um, in the air um, at the moment. Don't get me wrong, we'll generate a substantial amount for his departure Paul Pobbers and obviously with the money we would generate from him generate from his departure if we did sell him we'd probably be able to get two or three players with that money in the January transfer window but we don't want to do that because if we just got £150 million pounds for Popper, then we went and got two or three players for around 140 or £150 million, we'd be only spending spending money what we generated basically so that obviously you know, would be bad business from the football club you know we're not that type of football club you know that does uh, come, yeah, do that and that um, but um, yeah, so I think definitely no. I think I want Paul Popper to stay, but I think Damian Rojo need to leave. Sanchez needs to go. I think my own, uh, my opinions, Matic needs to go. Small and Jones not good enough. Um, obviously with Ashley Young, um, I think he's gonna be. This could be his last season as a Manchester United player. You know, Ashley Young's obviously his age now. Is he what 33 or 34 uh, years of age? Hasn't really got that long left in him. In Ashley Young, obviously Ashley Young's been a long servant here anyway. You know, he has been at Manchester United eight years. Um, as Ashley Young, I think he's heading into his ninth season now um, as a Manchester United player. He's young. Um, obviously, you know, the club had given him a one-year um, extension uh, last season, which was bad business uh, for Manchester United. And um, But like I said, you know, this, there's quite a few long-serving players here now. The, obviously, the, in the past, there's been long-serving uh, players um, and that, um, at the football club. Um, Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Liverpool um, did actually you know, win the Super Cup uh, yesterday um, against Chelsea. Um, it ended 2-2 um, in normal time and extra time. But I think you know Liverpool did win on penalties 5-4. Uh, so obviously Liverpool have won the Super Cup. I think all in all now Liverpool have won more, won, won more trophy than us. Uh, I think Liverpool have won 43. I think you know we've uh, won uh, 42. And I do believe that Jamie Carragher you know, was actually you know, riding, uh, winding Gary Neville up about that. But I still believe you know we can win another Premier League title before Liverpool you know win uh, the Premier League because obviously you know Liverpool have never won the Premier League anywhere you know since he got found in what 92, 93. And all in all you know Liverpool have not won it for uh, three decades. They've won 18 all first divisions, but obviously you know they haven't won the Premier League you know of course uh, since um, Ad uh, Kilty you know, got founded. I obviously you know said um, on the previous video didn't I? I said, you know, my top four predictions and that, you know, I think City are going to win the league this season. Like I said, I know it's too early to say who's going to win it, but I'm just giving my predictions of what I think is going to, you know, happen throughout the course of the season. That So City to win the league, obviously City are going for their third, you know, title um, in a row. Obviously they're going for their fifth all in all. Um, obviously, you know, we, you know, won three back-to-back -back titles, you know, back in 2007, 2008 and of course, you know, uh, 2009 and that. But I think City, you know, are going to win it this season. I think Liverpool will probably, you know, finish second. I think Liverpool will finish second and that. So I think the top two, you know, will be like last season you know I think you know we'll get third I think we'll definitely you not know, get third and I think Tottenham will probably you know finish fourth maybe Arsenal you know could uh, finish uh, fourth between Tottenham and Arsenal I think you know for uh, fourth place because like I said you know with Tottenham you know looking at what you know their, the business they did throughout the course of summer especially on deadline day I think Tottenham you know should be uh, challenging for the league uh, this season obviously Tottenham wants to start winning too where we do now competitive they have been for a number of years now and you know they have come close on quite a few occasions occasions of Tottenham you know to win in the you know to win in the league and that but and also they came close to winning the Champions League last season because obviously last season they got to their first ever Champions League final did Tottenham uh, obviously you know they did uh, lose uh, by two goals uh, to nil and that but I think Pochettino's expectations this season probably you know will be to will be will be will will be to 
you know, probably know Winters and Sue were in that. Pochettino's a great manager, don't get me wrong. Um, obviously, you know, we was in for Pochettino um, at one point in that. And like I did say, I think the only way at the time we was in for Pochettino, the likes of Zinedine Zidane, I think the only way, the only way they'd come at Manchester United if we obviously, you know, give them a substantial amount to spend them um, at the football club um, and that. But um, I'm happy with Solskjaer um, anyway. And I think Pochettino at the time, has, he hasn't got any intentions of leaving Tottenham. I think Pochettino, you know, remains happy at Tottenham, you know, as well. Premier League proven his Pochettino. He's been at Tottenham now um, over uh, five years. But obviously, you know, he does want to uh, win uh, some Sue uh, uh, with Tottenham and that. But they did good business throughout the course of um, the summer, did Tottenham. They have got good players as well, you know, don't uh, forget. And I think, you know, with Arsenal, um, I don't think they'll win the league, Arsenal. No, I don't think they'll win the league. I'm sceptical about that happening. But um, I think Arsenal, you know, will have a better season this season than, that, that they, than what they did last season. I think Arsenal will uh, probably qualify for the Champions League this season. I just said it's between Tottenham um, and Arsenal uh, for fourth. Um, but Arsenal did a good investment, you know, throughout uh, the course of the window. Don't forget, Arsenal had a bad start to the window, you know. They only got around, what, £40 million to spend, but they did really, really well, you know, did Arsenal. I didn't think they'd have done that good in the window, so there was a very, very um, competitive. Um, with Chelsea, like I said, I don't think they're going to finish in the top four. I think they'll finish outside of the top four, Chelsea. They could finish fifth, maybe a sixth for Chelsea, because I do think Chelsea have got problems at the moment. Obviously, they lost the opening day. They lost the first game, obviously, to us, 4-0. They also... Um, lost there yesterday against Liverpool in the Super Cup and that and Chelsea have got a lot of problems you know obviously they lost one of the best players throughout the course of the summer they've also got a transfer ban um, obviously you know there's question marks around Frank Lampard you know can he succeed to the highest level um, of management um, I don't know to be quite honest with you because Frank Lampard hasn't you know really got the experience of manager you know, you know he only started uh, management uh, last season don't forget uh, did Frank Lampard he only started uh, management uh, last season um, with Derby of course I think he did you know get uh, Derby uh, to the playoff uh, final and that um, but um, yeah, so I don't think Chelsea you know where we'll finish um, in the top four because obviously you know they've got currently uh, problems. Um, I, I I could give a prediction of uh, all the table, but you know I just can't you know really uh, be bothered uh, currently um, doing that. Um, but um, like I said, you know, the majority of this squad's not only going to solve scars. Like I said, there's only three players there that are his. Um, obviously, you know, he's still inheriting 11 of Jose Mourinho's players. Obviously, you know, we spent just under £400 million under the Jose Mourinho and Moreira and that. And obviously, I told you the reasons why it didn't work out under Mourinho because obviously it was part of the bus football. The, the style of play wasn't good enough. You know, there was no sort of winning philosophy under Mourinho. You know, there was no sort of, you know, transfer strategy under Mourinho and that. And obviously, Mourinho had bad disputes with the players, you know, bad disputes with the board. The board obviously weren't back in the signing. That I wanted to recommend in uh, last summer, so this is why it didn't work out under Mourinho. Um, and I think he, uh, he served two and a half years with Man United, Jose Mourinho. He obviously won the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season with the club. Um, obviously, um, you know, under Louis van Gaal, you know, Marie, uh, Solskjaer's inheriting, you know, quite a few of these players. Obviously, some players have left now from the Louis van Gaal and Moreira and that. Um, but you know, we spent a substantial amount under Louis van Gaal and Moreira. We did win the FA Cup back under the Louis van Gaal era, that was back in 2016. And obviously, there's still Mary from the David Moyes era that Oligan Solskjaer um, is inheriting, you know, Moyes brought two players in, Fellaini as well, Fellaini, you know, he served a good six years with Manchester United, you know, before he um, left them um, in January, I think he went to where uh, China did Fellaini, and obviously there's two players here from the Alex Ferguson area, you know, don't forget that um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, of course, um, is inheriting, so the majority of this squad, um, of course, um, is not his, but Solskjaer, you know, did say at the start that somebody's looking to build the squad, you know, where um, the club's uh, mystery, because we've got a fantastic history in that, and he wants to obviously, you know, buy into that um, history, does Solskjaer, like he did uh, confirm in that, um, you know, we are... Liverpool are not better than us because they've won 43 trophies, we've won 42, you know, we're one of the most successful clubs in, you know, in England, you know, historically, we're historically the most successful team in England, you know, we've won 13 Premier League, you know, of course, uh, 20 um, all them um, in all, uh, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, that's obviously not over uh, six years ago now, uh, but I think we do get more investment in the next couple of windows, I think we can win uh, the league uh, next season, now, not this season, I don't think we win the league, um, I hope we do win the league this season. It would be a dramatic if we did, but I don't think you know it's uh, currently uh, going to um, happen in that. But um, yeah, this is mainly our Wolves Manchester United preview. Um, I do believe Man United are going to win this game. I'm going to give them my score predictions now. I think it's going to be three one to Manchester United in this game. I think we are going to comfortably uh, win it. And uh, I know Wolves, you know, did well last season. That you know they finished in they finished in seventh place, and they have got some good players that could cause us problems in that. But I think you know we're just going to have uh, too much uh, for uh, Wolves um, in this game. So, like I did confirm at the beginning of the video, Fred, you know, could possibly be involved. Damien is, is reportedly, you know, back home in training and that. Sanchez is obviously, you know, uh, working back to her full fitness. Um, so, he could rotate a little bit, but I think he'll probably go with similar, you know, teams as he did do um, against uh, Chelsea. Even Mason Greenwood could possibly, you know, start um, in this game as well. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider a subscribe, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.